Laudice and Teano. It is snowy and dark in the cool of the trees. The creatures all huddle, the foxes, the bees, through the drifts, twixt the flakes, along comes a stranger. He is by profession a logger, yet colder than he has fought yet in his comforted life. He now knows, or now thinks, he can gripe about strife, and he would, if he had, a kind soul which would hear him. But he knows or suspects he'll freeze neath these trees grim, and hooded, bedecked in their blanket, their vice. Tiano, the logger, appears with eyes dark as ice, but before he can conjure one more snow-filled vine, Tiano spies a glen, which is green as a ton, that he spent eating sweets with the clouds and the sun, on a summertime hill with these friends he had run, but that was a dream from a younger Tiano, whose fantasies might keep the man from a thaw, no, stumbling, floundering, falling, and rising, he tumbles, he crawls past the forest floor icing. He passes a border of flowers. Of flowers? A summertime haven. The logger is now here. A fossless rough circle, for in the old grove, as a harbor within a blizzard ravaged cove, undisturbed it is lane growing sweet grass and patches, till an unknown figure, cold and wet, he scratches, tearing and snapping past branches and twigs. He gumbles, he tramples, his arms dancing jigs, the meadow accepts him with an awkward smile. This traveller, now lying prone on the ground while Tiano breathes deeply the warmth of the air, he's melting, now safe in this quaint springtime snare, with his moment of rest peering about with his eyes. This young logger marvels aloud, and he cries, Good gracious, what is this Oglin I have found, without which I would surely be cold on the ground? The white storm is merely a faint wharf in this place, and the snowflakes are halted, though they've tried to chase me. Alas, I'm safe but cut off from my crew. They're in danger back there where the frigid air is blue. But perchance one or two may have also survived in this charming place. I have strong hope of reply. Hello, oh hello, any loggers like me? Anyone else through misfortune here neath these trees? Anyone hiding, frightened, meek, fearful, shy, mere? And a whisper thin voice from close by said, I am here. Unbeknownst to Teano, he wasn't alone, nor was he the first one to this place to be shown. His request for response was thought not unto words, so the field's resident, with few qualms, answered. Alack, cried Teano, I had not thought to meet a young maiden within this dark wood, quite discreet. I must know, wherefore are you here, and who are you? And the maiden, her head tilted, asked, Who are you? Now Teano paused, peering into the shade of an oak, beneath which two eyes gleaming like blades could be seen, but not else, till she deigned to emerge from the dark, smiling softly, her gait a slow dirge. Pondering, now that he can see her in the light, truly this girl is no mirage, drooping my sight, yet her eyes are as two turquoise pools, deep and cold, and her gowns are medicine to me of spun gold. O oh, fair damsel, he called out to answer her query, my name is Teano, a logger who merely to escape the storm has fled blind in a panic to where we are now in this garden botanic. However, how did you two manage to find shelter here from the winds, bone deep, cold, and unkind? Are we two standing within what you call my own? Ladikshay nodded solemnly and said, My home. Ladikshay is the name of the nymph in the glen, whose beauty, shimmering, had been beheld by men. Not for many long years until old good Teano, who is now witnessed and witnessing secrets aglow. Beneath covering oak leaves, bright and green in the weak sun, Tiano looks round, quite perplexed in his reason, as there stands no homestead, no hut, nor a hovel. Her home is a claim that Tiano finds novel. Kind girl, he proclaims, I am sure there's a reason, for binding your time and your life with these trees, on which songbirds would rest, after flight without fear. Like a thrush, might I sit in your calm forest here? Laudy chases rest here, pats the grass, warmly grins. Tiano by her side lies reclined, stares within. Starlit ponds, deep and dark, hidden only by blinks. He's enchanted, bewitched, if not else can he think. Storm and crew are forgotten, Teano's now well. He feels safe and content next to his nameless bell. So he cries, what a life, what a day, what an hour of difference is made in this field of wild flowers. Chopping and sawing, my morn had begun, now this humble young logger feels second to none. Such a fortunate end to this glorious day here. Then Laudici made a request that he stay here. Now at rest on the ground, Tiano's unaware of the signs now forgotten or calm grassy lair. But the words, or the tone, or the timing invoked by the nymph Laudice had from deep sleep awoke. Tiano's apprehensive, though he's still not sure where for his reservations arose of shy her. A warm glen, kind made in, what is then to be feared? 
and the last was a chill in the grass, greenly weird. Tiano on his feet starts to speak with a cough. Stay here? Why, I confess, I must sadly be off. The blizzard outside surely is now but a breeze. I must return to my forlorn friends, family. Everyone will be wondering and searching while I... He now paused, thinking he had heard rustling behind. But was nothing, merely a swallow taking flight. He turned back on to face her, silent and forthright. Many thanks for your aid from the snow, which was warming. Oh, I cannot stay, that bird's surely a warning. This place is to my eye eerily untrue. Are you certain, madame, that you're not passing through? And your speech is to my ear, another odd part. Though contrite I will be if that sight breaks your heart. You only, by the by, use my own words to speak. Indignant, she snaps, I use my own words to speak. The storm is truly quelled, Tiano was not wrong. Over the glen, in the trees, snow lies peaceful along. The paths which his crew had taken to reach their town. They now wandered in vain. Tiano's not around? I did not, said Tiano, back in the meadow, intend to cause offense. I sincerely feel woe. But I must, he continued, leave this place forthwith. I feel strange and uneasy in this house of myth. Farewell, oh farewell, fare thee well, lovely friend, and I. But here he stopped, his speech come to its end. That each day her hand raised a symbol he could read. He had said what he could, nothing more did he need. With a wave and a turn, Tiano moved to go. Laodice washed him stride into light winds and snow. He stepped over the bones of the rabbits and hawks, noticing not their meaning, lane scattered, he walked. Past the boundary, his mind firmly fixed on his home, for its warm hearth from which he'd not soon want to roam. Laodice watched him still, her toes crunching the swallows, whose bones lay beneath, her claws out, and she follows. <laughs>